I welcome Mr. Handi. Thank you very much, and thank you for uh, everyone for, for being here. It's, it's a small audience. It uh, slightly reminds me of our own journey. Um, so, so Think Gas is a relatively new uh, company. Um, if I look back uh, to a year ago, a year ago today, um, we were in a position where we had, uh, we were two individuals, we were two people. Uh, we were in discussions with our private equity sponsor to, to back us, um, and uh, we were hoping that everything would go well, and we were hoping that we would be able to be in business. Uh, a year on today, um, we have been through the ninth bidding round, we have been through the tenth bidding round, and we have emerged with uh, a number of GAs. Uh, we now have um, operations uh, that we're uh, commencing our work on in 10 districts across the country, um, six districts in, uh, in Punjab, uh, three districts in Madhya Pradesh, and, uh, and one district in, in Bihar. Um, so it feels a little bit like, like this audience. We, we started off very, very small. I hope in a year's time we'll be much larger, including this audience. Um, so from, from our point of view, we are, as I said, a new company. We are backed by a pri global private equity firm, which is called i Squared Capital, which is headquartered out of New York. We are looking to implement a structure and an organization which operates right across the gas sector. So we have a vision to become a gas player in India. City gas distribution is the beginning of our journey. We will look to operate right across the gas value chain, including LNG, anything from midstream to downstream in the gas sector is where we, where we intend to operate. We, we, we have an LNG uh, part of our business. We are developing a bio CNG part of our business. And that's our ambition is to, is to create a business which is operating right across the value chain. Our intention um, is to um, is to grow our business over the course of the next six to seven years with a real focus on on execution. The one we are being a new company in in a in a, a sector which is full of giants um, has its own challenges. Um, the one the one advantage that we have is that we have no legacy. We have started as a fresh company and we have no legacy. A lot of the other giants who are sitting, many who are sitting here and many who, who we all know who they are, the one thing they have is a legacy. Our advantage is we don't have a legacy and, we're, and we will look to take advantage of that in terms of how we go about setting up our organization. So whether it's in, in, in terms of our ERP system, whether it's in terms of the technology that we bring to managing our systems and, and our, our network, whether it is how we implement our SCADA system, whether it's how we implement our billing system. You know, if you look at a lot of the, a lot of the existing players who, have, um, who are billing to customers, um, I was talking to one player earlier in the week. On their website where people can pay, they have, I think, 392 different methodologies for for paying for, for customers to pay their bills, retail customers to pay their bills. Separately, the, in addition to that, they also have cash. Everybody who's familiar with this sector understands that the household sector is the sector where the margins, if you take into account the total cost of capex required for um, uh, laying gas to, sh to, um, to households, the margins are the lowest. Okay? Having a system whereby you have 392 mechanisms for payment, plus you have cash, all of that increases the costs in terms of the overall payment structure to actually get the revenue, a low amount of revenue, from, from a wide audience of customers. There are smarter ways to manage that. And we intend, given that we're starting from scratch with those customers, to implement a smarter methodology by which we can um, collect revenue from the customers, perhaps with a smaller set of options for customers, but our, um, our objective is to reduce the overall cost of collecting revenues from that customer base. That's just part of not having a legacy and being able to move smarter and being able to start with the latest technologies rather than the technologies which, which, are, which have evolved over the last 10 years. And, 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 and having some of those implemented. So, so that's, the, that's the strategy that we have in terms of how we're looking to, 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 to build out our business. 
The other element that we also recognize is that um, what this sector requires to be able to grow and achieve the levels of penetration that we aspire for, that the government aspire for, aspires for, and frankly that, that this country, that the nation needs, the thing that is required is a proper, is a proper ecosystem. An ecosystem where um, gas companies, the utilities, the regulators, the state entities are essentially all working together. They understand the objectives of each. At the moment, um, what, we, what we find is that a lot of people, a lot of parties within that set have some short-term objectives, vision statements, and the question is all about action. If we can create an ecosystem where people are connected, people are working together, we need to create an ecosystem where everyone understands what actions needs to happen, and that is an action plan which, which um, evolves and is implemented over a number of years. Because city gas distribution, given the level of work required, is not something that happens overnight. Right? And just because we say we want to have 15% gas penetration by 2030 today, doesn't mean it will happen. Right? We, there's a lot of work to do. Right? And that ecosystem to allow that to happen needs to be put in place. From our view as a new entrant, there's still a huge amount that requires to be done in, in, in creating that ecosystem. Part of what's required is for a lot of the gas utilities to start working together. So for example, if we take uh, the state of Punjab, where we have six districts. In there, we, have, we're, we also have alongside us in neighboring geographies, we have Torrent, we have Gujarat Gas, we have another company called IRM, um, we have Indian Oil Adani, all operating within the same area. Everyone's building completely independent infrastructure. Right? Over time, what should happen is that there should be some overlapping of infrastructure, there should be some sharing of infrastructure. That can only happen if we build an ecosystem where people can start trusting each other. The problem today is that people don't trust each other. Is that if, if I build a pipeline and I, 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 make, I try and make that available, the, people, the person I'm trying to make it available to doesn't trust that that, that will necessarily be available into perpetuity. Okay. So building the ecosystem is very, very important and that requires a building of trust between the companies. I think the regulator is very, very central to making sure that that happens. We're very glad that the, the, regula the current regulatory regime with the current leadership is moving more from being a regulator to being a facilitator. It's a statement they made very early on, but I, we can actually see that happening. It's not perfect, but it's moving very much in the right direction, and we think that as long as they become part of that gas ecosystem and they have an intention to um, act as that facilitator in the long term rather than just the short term, we think that there can be a huge difference to make sure that all the gas companies are working together to make sure we have a proper ecosystem and a proper sharing of infrastructure. That's just in gas. Beyond that, I think the, the people who have spoken previously talking about the ability to integrate with other utilities, that's a lovely vision and we should see that happen. The difficulty will always be that as soon as we start sharing some infrastructure with other utilities, whether it is billing systems, whether it is uh, complaint lines. Okay? I, with my business, I want to be able to control my business. Right? Every interaction that I have with my customer impacts on my franchise and my brand. The issue around sharing of a lot of these things is, it, the, the risk always comes is, do you end up with the lowest common denominator? If I'm sharing a, a customer relationship system with five other parties, because of the way that that system is managed, do I run the risk of damaging my franchise because the person who is the worst manager of his customer relationship impinges on me? Okay. So this is why we need to build a system of perhaps some regulation around how these shared systems might operate. Because only then can I feel comfortable that if my customer calls into a, a, a shared line Will my customer get the, right, um, re w w get the right feedback in the way that I want that feedback delivered um, to, so that he's, he's representing my brand and, 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 my and the type of relationship that I want to have with my customer? So again, so we're at a very early stage. Some of these things are aspirational, but we are working to a plan to make sure that we can implement a number of these things. So at that stage, I'll just stop and allow you to go back to some of the other speakers. I think very nicely put up.